Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call of Safaya Food India Limited hosted by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participants line will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Shivani Karwat from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you ma'am. Good evening everyone. Welcome to the Q4 and FY24 earnings con call for Safaya Foods India Limited. From the management we have with us Mr. Sanjay Gurohit, Group CEO and Whole Time Director, Mr. Vijay Jain, CFO and Mr. Rahul Kapoor, Head Investor Relations. I hope everybody had a chance to go through the results and investor presentation which was uploaded on the exchange earlier today. Before we proceed a reminder that this call may contain some forward looking statements which do not guarantee future performance and involve unforeseen risk. A detailed disclaimer has also been published in the presentation. I will hand over the call to Mr. Sanjay or to you sir. Good afternoon everybody. uh great to have all of you all on this call we are going to be talking about our quarter four and our full year fi24 performance i'll go straight to page number 6 where um i will let's first talk about our three year scorecard uh, in december 21 uh, after uh, we listed we had guided that our aspiration is to grow revenues by 25% year on year uh grow ebitda by 30% year on year and double the store count over a 3 to 4 year period um uh, if you look at 3 years since our listing um we've been able to achieve most of Uh, achieve all our objectives uh, sales has revenue has grown by 37 ebitda by 92 and we have almost doubled our uh, restaurant count when i look at uh, specifically uh, when i look at specifically performance for the full year fi24 we have grown restaurants by 17% restaurant sales by 15 adjusted ebitda has grown by 3% and adjusted pat by uh, has declined by 44% what are the highlights of the year when you look at uh, the entire qsr industry and you take all uh, four parameters into uh, consideration revenue scale and growth ebitda margin and growth and a fifth parameter of new restaurant additions we believe that we've delivered the best all round performance when revenue scale revenue has grown by 15 our ebitda margin of 10.5% has grown by 3% and we've added 129 stores so from an all round perspective revenue size scale ebitda margin percentage and growth uh, we feel that we've delivered the best performance in the industry within that kfc sapphire has delivered our highest ever annual res- ebitda margin of 19.7% and we've had our highest restaurant additions at 88 uh, we are quite proud to say that underlying these financial results is a maniacal focus on execution and improving customer and operational uh, metrics we are ranked among the top 3 franchises by yum on in both kfc as well as pizza hut on our customer metrics and our operating standards we are also quite proud that we were ranked the number one qsr in india on uh, our esg score rated by dow jones sustainability index and we are 95th percentile among all qsrs globally we also achieved this is an internal metric but i'd like to share with you we also achieved our best ever employee engagement score since 
2018 that we have tracked, and today we are placed at the 88th percentile of all companies surveyed by the Global Gallup Engagement Survey. Uh, all companies, all companies that they survey worldwide. Um, when I look at specifically the quarter four um, highlights, are consolidated restaurant sales at 630 crores grew by 13 percent. EBITDA at 110 crores grew by 7 percent. And really, the story, as we indicated even in February, was that demand across all consumer product categories remains constrained and now we've got the private final consumption expenditure metrics released by the government over the last six quarters it's been the worst it has been over the last two decades. In quarter four we added 23 KFC restaurants and our total count is 872 as of 31st March 24. Consolidated restaurant EBITDA declined 5% year on year and margin was 13.6%, down 260 basis points. Consolidated EBITDA at 110 crores, 17.5%, grew Y on Y by 7%. Adjusted EBITDA, that is 3 India 116, at 54 crores in the quarter, 8.6%, declined by 3% Y on Y. Consolidated PBT of um, 8 million or 80 lakhs or 0.1%. Adjusted PBT was 8.3 crores or 1.3%. PAT was 2 uh, crores or 0.3% and adjusted PAT, that is the non uh, India's 116 PAT was 7.6 uh, crores or 1.2%. I'm going to quickly uh, take you through uh, KFC. Uh, KFC during the quarter also continued to perform well in a tough demand environment over the full over the quarter. I'm referring to page number 20 here. Um, over the quarter, we grew revenue by 16% uh, and we added 23 new stores. Our brand priorities continue to be those six priorities: uh, increase fried chicken category relevance build craveable taste, um, continue to expand on our value offerings, uh, offer the customer a frictionless experience both online as well as offline, improve our operations and improve accessibility. In the, uh, in the month of uh, April, uh, so in quarter four, we relaunched uh, our Chizza LTO, that did well, and, th and this quarter, We've taken our burger game to the next level by launching five new burgers, American, Caribbean, Mexican, Indian, and uh, uh, Indian veg and Indian non-veg. Uh, we've relaunched also, uh, uh, which you will discover only at the store, the Indian veg option, uh, a paneer zinger. But the other four burgers are also, uh, if I dare say so myself, absolutely outstanding. And we launched 23 stores in the uh, quarter. So we are on track to double our restaurant count by the end of the year. I'll hand it over to Vijay Jain, our CFO now, for the uh, fi financial numbers. I'm on slide 25, which covers channel wise sales contribution. Our delivery mix remained steady at 39%. Moving on to the next slide, SSG came at minus 3%, uh, and ADS at 114. Uh, just to clarify, the ADS is also impacted by new store additions, uh, which we over the year almost had 25% restaurant additions. And as we called out, generally the new stores take time to scale up, uh, and their ADS are generally lower initially in the first year compared to the brand average. Overall revenue grew by, grew by 16%, and while gross margins improved by 150 basis point, the negative SSG meant that it impacted restaurant EBITDA, which came at 18.7% for the brand, down by 40 bips year on year. Slide 28 gives you a four-year annual performance and five-quarter trend. Uh, you can clearly see K Sapphire KFC delivered an industry-leading performance with 88 new restaurants, 18% revenue growth for the year, and highest annual restaurant EBITDA at 19.7%. 
when let us come to pizza hut now i want to first reiterate that pizza hut is our second pillar of growth in our multi brand restaurant operation um, strategy um, the quarter continued to be challenging on pizza hut uh, where there we new grown uh, where system revenue grew uh, by uh sorry declined by 3% by on by and sssg declined by 15% by on by we had called out that we have got a simple and clear strategy on reviving uh consumer interest on the brand in a tough uh, demand environment added pressure of uh, high competitive intensity we said there are three things that we want to do one is Uh, uh how do we how do we stoke consumer interest behind, behind the brand and to do that we've got to re- be able to launch relevant market innovation which is backed by ma- significantly higher marketing spends so uh in february we called out that uh, you should be able to expect new innovation to come out in the next one two quarters on feb 29th we launched melts melts is a absolutely unique um, a product uh, it is a folded handheld pizza concept and it is aimed at extending the pizza consumption to in between meal occasions so it doesn't take on pizza directly but it's trying to expand the number of occasions that pizza is consumed and we back we back that and are continuing to back it with a multimedia uh, marketing campaign um uh, apart from melts i'm now looking at slide number 31 you can see the other innovations also uh, that were launched we uh, had a range of pastas and we launched a very interesting thin and crispy crust pizza also um uh, uh all this is uh, i would say the start of the journey on the brand we are quite excited with uh, what is in store on the brand over the next uh, couple of quarters uh, the second uh, part of our plan we said is how do we improve our uh, internal continue to build on our uh, uh customer scores as well as our operational metrics uh our dragon ki- tail kitchen planning tool rolled out in 100% restaurants we have seen improvement in service levels especially on delivery uh this dragon tail is uh, integrated with the aggregator platforms it's a never uh, it's a first time ever uh, uh you know kind of an integration and we believe that this muscle is a unique muscle that uh, we are building uh, our lunch day part activation also was rolled out and now 90% plus high street restaurants are open for late night deliveries and in line with what we said we'll be cautious and i'll just uh, i don't know where uh, where we lost each other but perhaps uh i'll just cover the last part of what i discussed on pizza hut in line with our cautious expansion strategy we did not uh, we had net zero store addition in the uh, quarter and now i'm going to ask vijay to please say share the pizza hut financial i'm on slide number 35 delivery mix came at 50% for the quarter and dining mix improved to 35% SSG was minus 15 for the quarter and overall revenue declined by 3% for the quarter and while gross margins improved year on year by 120 bits the impact of negative SSG and higher marketing spends meant that the restaurant EBITDA came at negative 2.7% if we exclude the additional marketing spend done during the year during the quarter the brand broke even at the restaurant EBITDA level Slide number 38 gives you the four-year trend. Clearly, the brand is facing the challenging time. With the initiatives planned on the product product side, which is backed by investments both in marketing and improving or strengthening the consumer experience, we are confident that brand will emerge stronger in the medium term.
quick update on uh, sri lanka so we are seeing green shoots of revenue growth so ssg grew by 4% and system grow uh, growth of 8% in sri lankan uh, terms uh, however uh, store operating cost inflation was a drag on profitability and it it is a it is a challenge um, but we remain confident that fi 25 should be better and then when you look at uh the brand strength in i'm referring to slide number 41 uh, it is undoubtedly the number one qsr brand in the country uh, both from a name recognition perspective from an accessibility perspective uh, so as the economy improves we have great faith that uh, our sri lanka business also that we are seeing revenue starting to improve will come back on track Slide 42, uh, Lanka business channel-wise mix, the delivery mix was largely stable at 37% for the quarter. The SSG, which was the heartening piece for the quarter, was 4%. Overall revenue in Lankan terms grew by 8%, and in Indian rupees it grew by 22% for the quarter. And while gross margin saw also an improvement even in Lanka business by up by 90 basis points quarter on quarter, restaurant EBITDA came at 12.3%. Uh, impacted by Sanjay mentioned the cost inflation which we experienced on the operating expense side of the store. Slide 46 gives you a four-year trend. Uh, we can see the green shoots of demand recovery in the in the country, uh, which is reflected in form of SSG. Uh, the quarter one has also started well for Sri Lanka in terms of SSG. So we expect a FI25 to have an improved performance over FI24 for the business. <coughs> Uh, with this, uh, we can open the floor for questions, teacher. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jay Doshi from Kota. Please go ahead. Um, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is, you know, over the last 45 days or 40 days or days in this quarter, are you, uh, you know, directionally, are you seeing any st stabilization of same store sales trends uh, for KFC? Is it deteriorating? Or is it improving? Can you give us some idea in terms of how the year has started, and uh, based on what you see right now, how do you sort of what's your outlook for the first three to six months? So, uh, hi Jay, good to hear from you. Uh, as you know, I'm saying generally we won't give you guidance for the quarter. But however, having said that, if I if I look at how the first The first 40 days or so have started. Um, April is not a comparative uh, month for us from a KSC perspective because this year saw the full impact of the Chota Navratra, and during this time both our north and west businesses get uh, impacted uh, significantly. May has uh, May is significantly better than either uh, Jan Feb March quarter. um but i mean it is more or less in line with the improvement that we see uh, on a uh, year on year basis uh, sequentially this quarter is, so sequentially this quarter is a better quarter if i remove navratra and uh, we are seeing trends along those lines we are not seeing uh, even further or we are not seeing further improvement uh, in Uh, on KFC, on Pizza Hut, uh, we are seeing improvement uh, compared to what we saw last year. Uh, but uh, because uh, you know, because uh, the brand is uh, has undergone a fragile, uh, you know, few quarters, I'm still wanting to see how it pans out. and perhaps before the next uh, uh 
uh, or during the next uh, quarterly results, we should give you uh, concrete evidence that indeed we are starting to turn the corner on the brand. Just to clarify, Sanjay and Bank, uh, sequential improvement which we traditionally see in this quarter, we are seeing on the KFC brand and we are seeing that better upliftment compared to last year in Q1 versus Q4 on the Pizza Hut brand. I think he referred somewhere year on year, uh, he meant sequentially. Understood. So basically, the March to June uh, seasonal update is in line with the usual seasonality this year so far. And in Pizza Hut, it's a little better than what we saw last year. Yes, perfectly. Perfectly said, Jack. Sure. Thank you. One more question, if I may. Uh, you know, when you sort of, in your conversations with aggregators, what is your reading of, uh, you know, the fact that aggregator seems to be doing fairly well? Uh, in terms of YOI growth rate and, uh, you know, overall QSR uh, industry is started lagging meaningfully. Even the brands that used to do much better about a year ago, that gap is widening. So, you know, how do you see this? Is this, you know, more of a structural trend or is this, a, you know, temporary phenomenon and how, how do you interpret this? Yeah. So, um, one is that right now we get only data uh, from one of the aggregators and undoubtedly their growth rates have been higher. When we drill down uh, from a QSR, so uh, there are two parts that uh, they seem to be saying. One is uh, there has been uh, expansion of options. Uh, and restaurants that they have, uh, 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 you know, they have taken on board. So uh, there are more restaurants that are being served today. That is number one. And secondly, uh, they're getting better growth out of high value, uh, uh, high value transactions, and that is largely happening through the earlier casual store fine dine restaurants who come on board and now are looking at delivery in a meaningful uh, manner. Having said that, uh, if I just look at our two brands, KFC's performance also is in line with the kind of growth that uh, uh, we are seeing, uh, you know, the uh, one aggregator uh, delivery. Exactly. So what I understand uh, from you is the growth for aggregators uh, outperformance that you know versus QSRs is largely a function of uh, you know if I were to sort of you know at a higher price point, uh, premium restaurants, luxury restaurants are seeing more uh, you know the growth is driven by that and not uh, the mid price restaurants where QSR falls. Yeah. So you have latched on to only one of the two reasons. One is yes, what Sanjay is saying that SSG is driven by whatever components. So if I look at the Q3 results of uh, one of the aggregators, 27% is what they grew by, 7% SSSG, which is largely driven at a premium end. The 20% came through restaurant addition. And you could look, look at the comparable number. KFC also grew by 18% for the year. So yes, it's largely driven through addition and a component of SSSG is driven through premium restaurants. Uh, that's very helpful. Thank you so much and good luck for FY25. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hari Kapoor from Invested. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, I just have two questions. Uh, you know, one was on Pizza Hut. So, you know, in light of uh, the changes that you're making, and you also said you'll kind of relook at stores, etc. Uh, uh, could could this be a fairly muted year in terms of expansions? Uh, is, is is that uh, the fair way to look at it? And uh, if there is any number, if you could share on that, thank you. Yeah, so again, uh, we won't give out annual numbers or uh, we have given out a uh, guidance uh, December 21 where we said we could double the count of both the brands over three to four years. We could clearly see KFC tracking on that for three years in fact rather, rather than four. Pizza Hut, I think we are taking extremely cautious approach. So yes, uh, it would be muted. Now what that muted would be is subjective but yes, it would be fair to say it would be muted. 
Got it. Got it. And and the second question was on inflation. So, uh, you know, our, our uh, you know some of our trackers suggest that you've seen some uh, reduction in the overall inflation environment. Uh, uh, you know, in Q3 and Q4. Just wanted to get your sense of you know what's the kind of uh, 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 you know scenario you're seeing going into FY25, and is there a potential price increase? Uh, uh, you know, likelihood or in the current uh, environment, that's uh, a, a bit too far-fetched. So whatever benefit had to come in into the PNL in terms of gross margin improvement, I think that's locked largely starting Q3 of last year. Uh, and if you see sequentially gross margin, we had called out that it will be range bound, uh, plus minus few basis points. I think going forward, we expect the same. The gross margins would be range bound, uh, plus minus few basis points. And uh, we don't see any uh, price increase, material price increases happening. Uh, there could always be small revisions, but we, see, we don't see any material price increases happening, at least in the H1. Got it. I'll come back tomorrow. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shirish Pardesi from Centrum Booking. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you mentioned in the beginning there is a competitive intensity uh, is also one of the... Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Can you please come near to the mic and speak, please? Hello? Yes, yeah. please go ahead. Yeah, better. Yeah, go ahead, Sirish. Yeah. No, I was just referring to your initial comment that, that competitive intensity is uh, there. So I just wanted to see that um, uh, and your comment specifically. Is it gone up uh, substantially in Pizza Hut? and um, lowered in KFC or it's similar? Uh, that's my question. Basically, I wanted to understand whether this new innovations, what we have launched in the market, will it drive the consumer occasion, what we have been planning to give, bring them to more to uh, footfall to our stores? Yeah. So, the competitive intensity is a not a quarter phenomenon, but a two-year phenomenon. And... Uh, uh, last quarter also I mentioned that we look at a two by two grid uh, to determine competitive intensity. One is the size of uh, subcategory within QSR. The larger the size, greater the competitive intensity. And the uh, ease of kitchen operations, uh, the uh, easier the kitchen operations, the easier or perhaps the greater the competitive intensity. So if you look at a two by two matrix, perhaps uh, 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 pizza is the largest category and relatively kitchen operations are easy. Relatively it is easy and therefore that is why we are seeing competitive intensity. I also called out that it's not as much physical uh, infrastructure that is put up. So if brands don't have omni-channel presence rather than we are seeing a multitude of cloud uh, brands. Uh, and when we look from a, from a fried chicken category perspective, uh, while now it is almost the second or, you know, it's a large category, the complexity of kitchen operations means that to produce great product is so much more difficult and therefore competitive intensity there is lower. Perhaps if I look at burgers, the competitive intensity is significantly higher than fried chicken uh, and perhaps even coming close to now pizza. Okay. Uh, having said that, uh, I think the idea behind uh, melt uh, and, in, and in general innovation on uh, the Pizza Hut brand is to both... Uh, uh, both revive consumer interest and therefore pull a little bit of market share from all the other pizza players. Also, uh, through melts, there's an additional benefit of increasing the number of pizza occasions beyond, um, uh, you know, mealtime occasions. And therefore, in between meal snacking occasions also, uh, the brand uh, 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 or the this this launch is meant to uh, this launch is meant to uh, do that okay <clears throat> and the second <clears throat> question is that in the mid to long term maybe another two quarters Pirisha, your voice is very uh, very soft 
No, my second question is on the <coughs> SSG. Uh, though we have now uh, taken a pause uh, for uh, opening more stores on Pizza Hut, do you expect that uh, next two quarters the revival uh, will happen positive uh, SSG for Pizza Hut uh, business? Um, I, I think it's no. This, there's no silver bullet on the uh, on the brand series. Uh, much as I would, as I would like to give you. Uh, a very optimistic uh, uh, outlook, but I think we are optimistic about the direction that they are taking, but it is going to take time. There's no doubt about that. It's going to take time. And it is not helped by a uh, demand environment that is so soft. And again, when we look at all the quarter four, many of the consumer product companies also that have come in, I think uh, some of them are in, uh, some of their results are uh, indicative of the pressure that we are seeing on consumer demand. Understood. Thank you and all the best. Thank, Thank you, Shidesh. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Karan Torani from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Thanks for taking my question. My first question was on KFC uh, EBITDA margins. I think uh, despite you know the uh, improvement in gross margins, thankfully the margins have been stable as compared to uh, peers, maybe in the burger and the pizza category, where we are seeing margin disruption. Uh, so, what's your take on margin uh, going ahead? Do uh, you believe that margins will remain stable, or uh, do you believe that there's a potential for expansion as well? Karan, are you uh, complimenting us, or are you saying our margins in KFC have not been as good? So, I just want no, to I'm complimenting that it's been stable. I'm complimenting it's been stable. But uh, are we expecting too much that? What is the potential for an expansion if at all? Yeah. Yeah. No, so, uh, Karan, again, the overall long term guidance on KFC margins have called out that we would like to be in that uh, 20% zone. Uh, if it goes higher, the idea would be can we expand even faster and invest in the new stores because we are quite comfortable with the uh, ROC, which, which we generate at a 20% margin level. That's the long term guidance we have always called out. Uh, right now, it's come down to 18.7 because the SSAG is not helping. So, if the SSAG remains uh, challenging, then yes, the margins would be under pressure. But the moment SSAG is back and if it's positive in the range of 3 to 6%, we expect the margins to be again going here to 20%. But no, we don't intend to take it beyond 20. In that case, we'll expand it faster. Got it. That's very helpful. A second question was on complementarity. So there have been players like Popeyes who are now looking to expand on a pan India basis. I think Bao Chicken is also somewhere scaling up in metro cities. Uh, so do you foresee that because of potential complementarity, uh, this could lead to you know prolonged pressure in growth, which could in turn lead to you know more margin pressures over the medium term? I mean, what's your sense on complementarity in general? Yeah. So. Uh, Two parts to the answer. Number one is, if you saw what we are trying to achieve on KFC, how do we grow KFC is to enhance the relevance of the fried chicken category. So from that perspective, competition actually creates positive noise around uh, the category and we should see greater adoption of fried chicken going forward. So in that sense, competition is only good. Now, now, uh, the second part to that question is that, however, at the scale that KFC operates, we undoubtedly have economies of scale also. So it is uh, difficult for any competitor to come in and be a cost uh, leader and therefore impair margins. So I don't think uh, uh, that should happen, uh, point number two. The bigger, uh, the, the bigger question to ponder over is, uh, you know, similar to the scenario that Pizza Hut is in. Pizza Hut, over 25 years, has got a very strong equity in the consumer's mind. But as a number two player in the large pizza category, still uh, needs to uh, clearly differentiate itself from the market leader. And that's our attempt. And we can see as to it's not, you know, even then it's not easy, even with the size and scale that Pizza Hut brand has. The important part, therefore, to see is that are the upcoming brands offering anything that is different to 
KFC from a consumer proposition perspective. I'll leave the uh, judgment to you. If you ask me, I would say no. But some of them can undercut in terms of pricing. This could be too pressure on growth. This could be too pressure on your margin. Just trying to play a devil's advocate. Can that scenario play out? Yeah. In fact, I uh, mentioned that in my second point that to be able to do that, either you're going to take a significant hit on your margin, uh, and therefore you're going to be out of pocket. And um, even for uh, a large player uh, like the number one player in pizza. It's going to impair their margin. Um, uh, so, so, and because they don't have the economies of scale, the economies of scale are at two levels. One is not only the sourcing economies, but also at a store level. If you don't have a critical uh, ADS, critical sales per store, then also your store operating cost as a percentage of the store uh, uh, P&L go up uh, quite. Uh, high. So, again, in this entire, uh, I don't think it's a QSR category. Generally, we have seen someone coming in and being price leader because in food, uh, people play the opposite game, try and be perhaps one or two rupees more premium and show quality rather than the opposite way. So, I think current is unlikely. Got it. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Devanshu Bansal from MK Global. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, I want you to check... Uh, Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Your voice is little less. Can you please use your handset? Sure, I'm already using my handset. It will be a, a bit louder. Yes. Uh, what is the... Uh, within the 3% SSG decline for KFC, uh, uh, what is the kind of transaction growth or decline that we've seen this quarter? So again, we have seen a, a transaction decline as well. We have, we have not given out a specific transaction growth numbers even previously, but yes, it's safe to say that transactions have also declined. Uh, generally, in the similar range, I would say single digit, no single digit. Got it. Vijay, I wanted to check how aggressive are we uh, going to protect our order count share here. So, uh, 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 like this, uh, we are seeing that the uh, uh, leader in the pizza segment at least has waived off delivery charges um, uh, just to, uh, in my opinion, gain the order count share. So uh, I want you to check for KFC, uh, you uh, people are the leader. How aggressive are we uh, going to protect our uh, order count share here? How aggressively are going to protect what? Our order count share. As in uh, how uh, can we, yeah, transaction share. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so today we are not finding too much of a difference between our same store sales growth and our transaction growth. Our pricing has been uh, largely stable uh, Devanshu. So the specific example that you took off is uh, one tactic that one player has used. Not necessarily that tactic works for uh, everyone else. Uh, suffice to say that our biggest uh, the the biggest play that we are making is in ensuring that pricing is kept to an absolute minimum. That's the uh, you know uh, that's the front foot batting that actually we are doing. And then our launch of uh, our snackers range at 99. We've got a full lunch range at 149. So there are enough and more value options that uh, uh, you know will drive transactions. So. I think we are being aggressive in trying to grow SSSG off the brand, undoubtedly. Did that answer your question, Devanshu? Uh, yes, it did, Sanjay. Uh, 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 second, I wanted to check uh, our cap capex at about 385 crore uh, is similar in FI24, uh, while we have added uh, uh, lesser number of stores uh, in the year. So, just wanted to check what is the reason for that. 
so again it's a combination of couple of things it also depends upon what kind of refurbishments you have taken this year versus previous year uh, what kind of other capex on tech investments you have done this year versus previous year the number of closures this year versus previous year so uh, all those factors come into play uh, when you are comparing of capex this year versus last year as i called out previously if you look at a capex per store per format so kft capex is generally in the range of 2 cr per store uh, for a 15 to 1600 square feet uh, pizza hut uh, we are seeing it in the range of 1.4 to 1.45 per store on pizza hut Uh, Vijay, uh, can you call out as in uh, uh, where uh, a major part of the difference has gone in uh, in terms of refurbishment or uh, technology? Devansh, if we can come back to you on that particular thing on exact details of it. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from from the line of Gaurav Jogani from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. uh my question is with regard to the pizza hut margins now you know uh, despite the uh, the lower demand scenario and negative leverage uh, we decided you know to go for an aggressive marketing campaign leading to actually an ebitda loss uh, so in this scenario given that you know the near term demand uh, also looks weak uh, how are you looking at the overall uh, margins for pizza hut for the coming couple of years So again uh, without the additional marketing investments you have broken even and with the kind of uplift we are seeing and again as i said it's too early in the in the quarter but the kind of uplift we are seeing combined with the seasonal up- uplift uh, we we don't see the brand going into negative on a full year basis in the coming quarters uh, as we move forward however uh, we do expect the restaurant ebitda to remain uh, in a single digit restaurant ebitda what we experienced prior to this quarter until the eds level goes back to that 50 55000 level we expect the restaurant ebitda to be in single digit yeah if i just add more color here also gora that i'm on the brand the issue is improving or the answer is improving demand and we are uh, we have been quite forceful in saying that we are not going to be victims of uh, the low demand environment but we are going to try and put ourselves out there and actually change the try and change change the trajectory of the brand and hence the emphasis on uh, greater level of innovation and hence and marketing investment so uh, i'm uh, this is indeed the way to go on the brand and now you look at how many how many brands will be able in a scenario like this to actually put in the additional investment and uh, this is a great opportunity for pizza hut rather than uh, uh, you know the looking at it in a negative manner uh, sure sure no so just wanted to get a perspective given you know, at what level the tolerance level is uh for the margins i mean uh, what is the balance that you would like to keep between the marketing spend and the margin so that was the broader question yeah so as long as i think they are quite comfortable as long as the brand is not losing money on an annual basis and uh, it's not get a quarter in isolation uh, uh, we are quite comfortable spending that kind of money because at the end of the day idea is to get the ads as an ssg up uh, doesn't really matter if you are hitting 5% as 20 bit mark or 3 or 7 how do we get the ads up and get the restaurant ebitda back to double digit that's the objective so yes it will be a, a single digit restaurant ebitda and as long as we are not losing money on the brand on an annual basis i think we are quite comfortable ah uh, sure so that helps and my second and the last question sir is with regards to if you look at the absolute ads numbers also i mean for the year i mean uh, the ads numbers are actually lower versus you know even the covid impacted years as well uh so so what should we uh, gather from this uh, yeah, i understand that it is impacted because of the lower uh, the uh, the tepid demand scenario but do you also think it is also function of the the store sizes that we have you know cut down and now somehow it is uh, impacting us because the pent up has gone down the delivery has also resumed to normalcy uh, so no, how should we look at these ads numbers you are referring to kfc or pizza or both in general uh, both both in general sir both in general Uh, let me take the second part first so it's not impacted by us cutting down the size of the restaurant 
uh, lot of our restaurants would still be delivering significantly higher ads than the brand average so capacity is not at all an issue the ads reduction is a function of two parts uh, as you keep adding 20 25% restaurants every year typically as we have called out earlier the new restaurants come at 70 to 80% of the brand average in year one they would take 3 years 4 years to mature and move towards the brand average so a 25% addition would typically take down the ads by 5% however generally that gets offset by a 5 to 7% ssg which the brand could generate in a in a general scenario which keeps the ads steady so if you are not getting the ssg as has been the case with pizza hut for last six quarters and kfc for last one year the additions are diluting the overall ads but the balance in terms of new store additions combined with the overall cost management meant that we have still improved on our profitability for the kfc business uh, and delivered the highest ever restaurant uh, so just a follow up on this i mean uh, so if we continue on this 25% kind of a store addition uh, for both the formats that is and yes. as you mentioned you know that the the their usual impact is around 5% all on the overall system yes. so uh, addition yes. would lead to 5% impact that can get offset yeah. if there is ssg of 5 to 7% then the radius remains steady that broad thumb rule so so even if we for example do a 5% kind of an uh, ssg going forward uh, it will still be fair to assume you know that uh, then the ads could remain flat and to drive higher ads per store we would right uh, mean we would have to do a higher uh, kind of an ssg would that be right to be required because if if it's a addition which are planned and ssg of 5 to 7 which we are quite comfortable with to deliver the margins of 20% those ads levels are fine uh, while we always love to have higher ads but those levels are completely fine for us to deliver a targeted number or aspired number Yeah. So my question is not on margin here; it's largely on the ADS bit only. So I mean, if as you said no, that twenty five percent addition. Sir, may I request you to please rejoin the queue for your follow up question? I'm just, just completing this point. No, no, we can come. We can connect again offline again. Okay. Yes, sir. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you. The next question is from the line of action from Fidelity. Please go ahead. Uh. Hi sir. Most of my questions have been answered. Just one question on Pizza Hut. Uh, I saw that there are no store additions this year, and I think you had flagged that that's something that you would do if you see ADS, uh, you know, uh, going below certain levels. Uh, so just when we think about getting back onto store addition for Pizza Hut, what are the markers you would have us look at? Should we be looking at a certain level of ADS? Should we be looking at a certain level of margins before which we start adding uh, capacity? Yeah. Uh, so, then, yeah. yeah. So uh, we have no additions for the quarter because we somewhere called out for the year. So for the year we still have the additions. Uh, last year, the year gone by, we added 33 restaurants for Pizza Hut. Yes, for the quarter, zero additions, and for the previous quarter, it was eight. Uh, as we called out the expansion will be cautious we are not saying we are going to be zero or pausing completely it will be extremely cautious uh, uh, suffice to say that the markers uh, i would say three markers uh, which we we'll track internally one is certainly looking at can the ssg come back on the brand that's the first uh, reasonable ads at a store so moving towards uh, 50000 ads level marks again gives us some comfort uh, which helps us to manage cost uh, more efficiently and deliver some sensible level of profitability and the third would be the profits itself i think moving towards 8% to 10% mark restaurant debita gives us confidence to increase the pace of expansion significantly till that time uh, i think we would be cautious on store expansion okay great and then uh, you know last year we had in the quarter by quarter things were a little noisy because you know demand was slowing down and then you had you know impact of face wave adik mas all that sort of stuff now um when we look at as 25 what would be the best way to gauge underlying trend i'm not asking for a guidance at all i'm just trying to say would a year on year you know uh, metric be a better way to look at it would be a sequential 
build out be a better way to look at it because you know uh, you follow what i'm saying right like last year yeah, so i i guess right? analyzing yeah. combination of this because unfortunately over last 3 to 4 years post covid every year and every quarter there has been some of the other exceptions as a result the trends which are sequential trends or year on year trends uh, there are some quarters where it gives out a good picture some quarters they are not really strictly comparable uh, so this year if i look at quarter 1 as has a navratra uh, falling in april last year it was across two quarters adhik mass would not be there this year uh, which should help the quarter 2 but quarter 3 uh, last year had some impacts on start which is moved to quarter 3 this year it probably will be in quarter 2 so that will be negative so yes especially for kfc those seasonal impacts unfortunately quarter on quarter will have to judge uh, looking at annual nothing like it but that's the best best way to look at it but yes some people may not be comfortable in judging a brand annually but quarter on quarter there will be uh, exceptions which have to be carved out to come at come out at a real ssg for that quarter thank you The next question is from the line of Dhiraj Mistri from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good evening sir. Congrats on good performance of KFC. So my uh, question is on Pizza Hut. Uh, so if I look at uh, uh, this uh, SSG decline, can you divide that between AOV and transaction value for this? Uh, and whether the uh, fun flavor pizza and the other uh, value uh, uh, innovation which we have done Has it really led to the transaction growth? So again, uh, while we are not giving out specific numbers, we have seen double-digit SSG impact, and yes, uh, the transaction impact has been also close to double-digit. So largely, you can say it's a transaction-driven impact which we have seen on the brand. Uh, the flavor fun, uh, uh, the growth which we saw on the both ADS levels and transactions level in the initial period. Uh, what we have seen right now, we have not been able to sustain that upside which we gained in H1 of FY23. Uh, right now, I wouldn't say any particular impact uh, coming from Flavor Fund uh, after it has lacked that last year. If anything, we saw a degrowth in transaction year on year. Having said that, again, it's not been a reason why the brand is losing SSG or transaction. When we look at our analytics. and the customers who have actually bought flavor fun vis-a-vis the customers who have not bought flavor fun i think that first set is doing better relatively vis-a-vis the other set so it has definitely helped the overall brand uh, without flavor fun the numbers could have been far worse for the brand got it got it and uh, second and last question on the uh, slide number 30 which you have mentioned on real estate of pizza hut that 3 to 5% portfolio correction you will be taking in next two quarters and 10% recovery can you elaborate on that what kind of uh, correction you would be taking and which stores basically so what you meant by portfolio size or uh... so what we meant by portfolio correction was uh, basically closure of lo- loss making stores which we have been there and if we have carried them for a long time we will use this opportunity to close down some of these stores the action has already started uh and we believe by h1 of next year those actions should get completed uh, h1 of this financial year sorry uh, the action should get completed on portfolio correction which is essential closure refurbs basically mean that stores which have gone old beyond 5 years we will do a refurb so that consumer experience doesn't take a hit so that's what we meant by refurbs okay okay but thank you that's it from my side thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Saurabh Kundal from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks. My question is on. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. Your voice is very less. Can you come near to the mic and speak, please? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, sir. Loud and clear. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So my question is on Sri Lanka. What is now the aspiration on uh, ADS as well as margin in that business? If you could give us something like you. Give for the Pizza Hut India business that ADS needs to reach about fifty fifty five for margins to <coughs> sort of uh, recover. So again, for the uh, I think coming upcoming year, the key would be whether we can deliver a SSG of that five to seven percent range that would help us take care of the cost inflation 
Hopefully, there are no further shocks on the cost inflations and uh, from the economy side. We have seen it quite steady. I think the last piece was on the operating cost inflation, which happened uh, between Q3 and Q4 of last financial year. So, if we are able to see that kind of SSSG, we believe we should be in terms of margin uh, in mid-teens on that particular brand. Uh, post that, if that's a steady state, we can take a call on how we'll go about our expansion. Until then, we'll be again very cautious on our expansion. Uh, you could see it a single digit in terms of a store count addition for the financial year. Right, and what is that comfortable margin level? Like for Pizza Hut India, it is 8 to 10. For Sri Lanka, it would so be... Sri Lanka at least getting it back into those, hitting those mid teens level, I think, would be key. So, uh, being at 15%, I think, would be in and around that 15% would, uh, would be good place to, again, look at expanding aggressively. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, just to reiterate, from a three-year perspective, we have called out revenue. We have said our aspiration uh, was to grow revenue by 25%, EBITDA by 30, and double the store count. Uh, over a three-year period, currently we have clearly uh, beaten those, uh, beaten that aspiration. A year might be up and down, but we hope to. Uh, continue at least our revenue and EBITDA uh, trend line. And uh, given a tough year in FI24, yet we believe that all factors put together, which means the combination of revenue scale, growth, EBITDA margin, growth, and net uh, new restaurant addition, on an overall basis, Sapphire clearly uh, is the best performing QSR uh, company. So with that, uh, I hope to see you all uh, next quarter and uh, have a good summer vacation. Uh, and thank you for joining us again. Thank on, you. Be on behalf of Sapphire Food Li India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.